My name is Rhea Turner. I'm a student in the Master of Environmental and Life Sciences program here at BU. Um, and today I'm with... I'm Sunel Engelbright. I am going into my third year and I'm also doing my four-year bachelor's in science degree. Today we're going to give you a little mini tour of our lab and let you know about how we do some zebrafish microinjections. Here we have our little microinjection setup. So this is used to um, do some of our Morpholino knockdowns on different genes in zebrafish embryos. So we use a few different pieces of equipment for this. We have a Pico pump, which is just uh, putting a, an amount of air through this tube, which is helping to actually do the micro injection. Uh, which is connected to a gas source. And then here we have something called a micro manipulator. And this is where we actually set up our needle with the Morpholino. And so we have to load the needle with our chosen Morpholino. And then we mount a certain amount of zebrafish embryos to then inject with our solution of choice. The tip of the needle is very tiny and so are the zebrafish embryos. In order to actually do the microinjection, there is a pedal on the ground which my foot will step on and that will allow a small amount um, from that of morpholino inside the needle to actually get into the embryo. So first thing I have to do is look under the microscope to make sure that my needle is just about above the embryo. And then with my hand, I'm going to insert the needle in the embryo. I'm going to press on the pedal and then retrieve the needle out of the embryo. So the embryos have a uh, chorion, which is that kind of clear structure that you see here. And then the more gray structure that you see is called the yolk. And the yolk is all of their nutrients for the next five days of their life and you can kind of note with some that the um, cells are starting to develop along the yolk, but they're still in very early stages, the one to four cell stage, which is when we need to do these micro injections so that the Morpholino that knocks down genes can actually be uptaken into every single cell that develops. Obviously when we actually do the micro injections, it's a little easier to control the micro manipulator and the needle there um, because the micro injections do have to be accurate in order for them to be uptaken successfully and you also have to remember that we're dealing with a, a one to four cell organism so we want to do them very little damage so that they have a high survival rate because we are we are poking them with a needle essentially right now we have two different morpholinos that we're injecting them with we're injecting them with a control which is essentially like a sham solution that's not going to affect anything in the fish but it does serve as that control so that they're undergoing the exact same treatment. Um, the other Morpholino we're injecting them with, uh, the ERR alpha reducing Morpholino, is going to decrease the amounts of ER alpha in the fish. So uh, with that being said, they're still growing into a normal a zebrafish larvae. It's important to do a control micro injection with this because if we aren't uh, doing the same treatment with the micro injection with the needle, we could have some um, differences in the survival and it would most likely be due to the fact that they weren't injected. We always want to do the exact same treatment to a control group that we would do to our experimental group to make sure that the results we're getting are accurate and based on the question we're asking. And any changes that we see is changes that we know came from the Morpholino and not from part of the procedure that we did. So it helps to rule out any external variables. This machine here is actually what we use to make our needles that we micro inject the fish with. Um, so we don't order them or anything. We just have these small glass capillary tubes and this mach machine, essentially we, we load one of these tubes and then it uses heat in order to melt it in the middle. Um, at the same time, it's pulling it apart, which creates um, the tip of our needle. First things first, I'm going to grab a little glass capillary. So what I do is I have to first almost thread it through the heated coil. 
hold it in place and we'll do the same to the top. And then once it's in place, close. And then once everything's set, I just click start. And you're gonna start to see now that the heated coil is gonna turn very light orange, which means that it's heating up. And then in a, very shortly, the weighted holder bottom is going to sink like that. And that now created two needles from one capillary. And then once the coil has gone back to normal, you open up the lid. If you were to look under the microscope, you would just see a very, very, very fine pointed glass needle. After we do that, um, to create two needles from one capillary tube, we have to look at it under the microscope and make sure that it has um, the edge that we want. So we actually use a little plier and make sure it has a pointed edge. And then after that, we have to make sure that the amount that's being ejected is uh, the proper amount that we want in the fish. So we have to calibrate the needle um, to one nanoliter of solution. So one microliter, uh, we can use pipettes um, in order to transfer one microliter of fluid. Um, one nanoliter is much too small to transfer with a pipette. So this is where we house the zebrafish colony that we have. So in this room, we have our main uh, tank setup called the aquaneering unit. So as you can see, we have a bunch of different tanks of zebrafish. Um, we have wild type zebrafish, which are just your uh, generic zebrafish that have had nothing done to them. And then we also have another line of zebrafish um, that you can notice here on the tanks. It says alpha slash alpha. And that's just um, a name for us to remember that these are zebrafish that have come from a gene edited line. The life cycle is around five-ish years. For our purposes, typically around two to three years is when their breeding capacity kind of diminishes. So we are constantly alternating the breeding of these guys in order to generate new embryos, which we can either take care of and then add them to our colony or for the purpose of different experiments, such as my experiment, where we're using those embryos to do the Morpholino knockdowns. These are our breeding traps, um, and this is actually how we collect the embryos from the fish. You can see that there are some marbles put in here as well as a colorful plant. And essentially, when we put these in the tank uh, and we decrease the water flow, it's going to mimic a, a more shallow water environment, which is where the zebrafish in their natural environment in Asia. And then once the lights are turned on in the morning, um, that actually triggers their, their breeding as well. So they will go into this little trap, uh, mate and breed, and then we are able to collect the embryos from this little space down here. It would be similar to salmon where it's external fertilization. So the females are expelling their embryos and the males are uh, producing sperm and that's going to fertilize them as they're laid here. It's important to breed them in, um, to alternate the tanks that are breeding. So if one tank breeds and gives us 200 to 400 embryos, we give them a, a, about a week break between breeding so that we're not depleting their energy, essentially. If they're breeding every day, then that takes a toll on the fish, so we wanna keep them healthy. And we also, in order to promote their breeding, we do give them a second meal of food uh, the day before. So that's another thing that helps them uh, get into that breeding mode.